Hey guys, it's Chris. Thanks for watching another episode of Behind the Words, which is basically a small video series that takes you as the reader and the listener of the book Blade Children to a whole new level. And if you haven't already done so and you want to buy the book, you can do so in hardcover, paperback, electronic version at our website. It's www.bladechildren.com. You can purchase all of that great stuff from the publisher called Westbow Press. Or if you like to listen to audiobooks, you like to go on long trips and listen to audiobooks, you can download the audiobook off of iTunes or even cdbaby.com. And I'll put the link down here for you below. But basically, it's over five hours of the book, which has cool uh, background music enhancements and sound effects. Something that you can really enjoy. Five hours for only $10. So check that out today. And again, like always, while you're on the internet, we really appreciate our fans and the readers and listeners out there who like the Facebook page and share it with their friends and families. You guys are helping us spread the word, and I really appreciate it. Uh, that website for the Facebook page is obviously facebook.com, and then it's forward slash Blade Children Book. So wanted to apologize to you guys for this video getting out to you so late in the month of July. Things have been pretty crazy around here for me. Uh, I have transitioned from a church called Vision Church, and I've gone to a church in Carrollton, Texas called Sojourn Church, which is another amazing church just like Vision. Uh, I have transitioned out from there to be also a full-time children's director at Sojourn Church. It's uh, a little bit more larger scale than my last church and so a lot more to do. Uh, getting settled in and getting things going. Um, it's been kind of a hectic month in a very good way and it's only going to get busier and better from here on out. But anyway, that being said, that's kind of why this video has come to you guys kind of late in the month, but I really appreciate your patience. What I wanted to do with this video was give you a sneak peek preview again into that audiobook so that you guys can follow along with the books if you have one, or you can listen carefully to what was written in the book. But basically the prologue of the book, the chapter before chapter one, is something that I like to put in there. Uh, it goes along with the storyline, but I wrote a sermon series uh, one time that I preached in kids' church called The Truth About Heaven, and it was to answer the question that all of us had thought at one point in time or another was, what does heaven look like? What's in heaven? Um, and I know that there are a lot of movies out there fairly recently, Heaven is for Real, some books out there to where people have said that they've died and they've gone to heaven and what they've seen and experienced and when they came back they wrote about it to share. And I'm not discounting any of that because that totally can happen, uh, God giving people those types of experiences. But really, when I wrote the prologue in Blade Children, I just went straight to scripture, and I also used some of my imagination. So not all of the stuff that's in there throughout even the whole book is all necessarily biblical foundational truth, but it was built upon that. And so I just want to take you for a few minutes on a crazy, wild adventure to where you get to experience heaven with your imagination and how I kind of perceived it by reading the scriptures. Uh, the dialogue is even taken from scripture, the dialogue between Lucifer and, uh, and God and what he's thinking. And so uh, I just want you guys to sit back, kind of enjoy this for a few minutes if you'd like. Uh, if you'd like to follow along, if you do have a book, it starts on page one. So that's pretty easy. And so check it out. Uh, again, it's just something that I wrote to kind of take you guys and let your imagination go crazy with it as well. And let me set you guys up where it's at. This happens way before anything else happens in this world, pretty much. It's basically what happens before what I call in the book The Great Rebellion, which is where Lucifer decides all of a sudden that he wants to be like God. He wants to overthrow God and his throne so that he could be the one worshipped. And so I put that in the book because I was wondering, you know, what was going on in Lucifer's head at that time? You know, why, why did he think that he could take this? And what were some conversations that some of the other angels had up there maybe when they encountered this? What, were, what was their response? How did, they, how did they attack? How did they defend? How did they whatever? And so I wrote this for you guys and for myself, just having fun with my imagination. Um, and again, check scripture. Uh, the Bible is always true. And so I leave you guys with that. And I'll look forward to talking with you guys next month. See you soon. The throngs of angels walked beautifully in sync with one another as if they were all connected as one body, traveling down the golden paved road that ran along the shores of the Crystal Sea. Their massive white feathered wings were gently folded behind their backs. Each angel was illuminated with a different color, some even unknown to the human eye. 
They all wore solid white gowns with a golden sash that had their names engraved in their heavenly language with a crimson red. The atmosphere was filled with soft, peaceful music, as if a lullaby was being played off in the distance. The place was well lit with beautiful arrays of colors from the angels, but the brightest of them all came from a brilliant light of glory that provided light to the entire land. It was as if the sun hung just above their heads, however, the sun was nowhere to be seen. As the angels walked ever closer to the source of this great light, the music gently grew louder and louder, and they hummed along with the tune of a sweet melody. At the very front of the line, leading the mass of angelic beings, marched two of heaven's head angels, Gabriel and Michael. Gabriel stood eight feet tall, illuminated with a beautiful hue of blue. He carried a large staff with an ancient writing etched along its surface as a sign of his authority. He had long blonde hair that came down to his waist, a symbol of wisdom and strength. His companion and friend, Michael, stood seven feet tall, also with long blonde hair. A green hue radiated from him as he carried a large golden bow that also had the ancient writing engraved along the bow's face. Gabriel and Michael had been with each other through many events, and together they shared the very special job of ushering the heavenly host into the king's throne room. Gabriel was the first to speak as they continued to march. Something doesn't feel right today. Looking at Gabriel in confusion while never missing a step as they continued to lead the others, Michael asked, What are you talking about, Gabriel? Gabriel, unsure of his answer, just looked at Michael. He replied, I, I'm not quite sure, but something doesn't feel right. I can't place my finger on it, but whatever it is, I don't like it. Michael looked forward again and chuckled, Gabriel, we do this every day. We lead the angels to the king's throne and worship him. What could possibly go wrong, he questioned. Gabriel sighed, smiled, and said, I guess you're right, Michael. I must be nervous about meeting the king once again. I know what you mean by that, Michael said. It's hard not to tremble in his presence. He is so powerful and mighty, and yet he loves us so much. He has such an amazing plan for his new creation called... Michael hesitated as he thought to himself. What did he call them again? Humans, Gabriel said. He calls his new creation humans. One, he calls man, Adam, I believe, and his companion he calls woman. Her husband named her Eve because the creator made her from one of Adam's ribs to be a helper for him. That's right, Michael said. How could I forget? It's such a funny word, too. Michael chuckled under his breath. Human, he said with a twisted expression. That's so funny. Gabriel spoke again, interrupting Michael's laughter. He even said that the humans were made in his very image. I wish we were made in his image, Michael said. What an honor that would be. Imagine being made in the image of the divine maker. Yes, but remember that he did create them a little lower than us. Not because the Creator values us above the humans, but because we are angelic beings while they are mere mortals. And don't forget why we were created, Michael, because that is still a great honor. Michael nodded in agreement as they continued to lead the angels down the golden road as they passed through beautiful pearl gates. In the very center of the entire angelic host, one angel stood higher above them all, a cherub named Lucifer. A cherub was an angel that was created as a symbol of the Creator's holy presence and His unapproachable majesty. Lucifer was the highest-ranking angel and the chief in command over all the guardians of heaven. He was known to all as the Lightbearer and carried a fiery broad sword that no one could lift but himself. Two sets of massive feathery wings helped balance his ten-foot-tall giant frame. He shone with an aura of multiple colors because his angelic body was unlike any other. It was made up of nine precious stones. The scarlet orange from the carnelian shone from his left leg, and the golden glow from the chrysalis from his right. 
An enchanting blue of the moonstone covered his right arm, and the warming color of yellow from the burl covered his left arm. The dark color from the onyx and the crimson red from the jasper glowed from his first set of wings, while royal blue from the sapphire and the greenish blue from the turquoise stone from his second pair of wings. His face shone with a deep green from the emerald stone. No other being was created with as much beauty, intelligence, and authority as Lucifer. He was created for the sole purpose of simply reflecting the light and to humbly allow the light to shine forth from him. He was magnificent to behold, to be sure. Even the Creator himself called him perfect and the most wise over all the angelic hosts. Lucifer was the next highest being in all of creation. On each of his sides surrounding him were his elite team of powerful angels, faith, charity, love, and gratefulness. As they walked close by, Lucifer whispered just loud enough for the four angels to hear, but was sure to be soft enough so as his words could be snuffed from the angel's humming tune. As he spoke, his voice sounded as if nine different voices spoke together as one, blending together so beautifully in harmony like a small band of stringed instruments playing together to create a symphony. Today is the day, my disciples. Today will be the day when I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above every angel that the Creator has made. I will rule over Zion and I will sit on the throne of the Most High. I will be God. Timid and unsure of the plan that they have been in on for the past several years, Faith spoke up. Are, are you sure this is going to work, Lord Lucifer? Lucifer and the others looked at Faith in disapproval. I mean, you're already in command over all the host of heaven, and you're the seal of perfection here. You're full of wisdom, and you're perfect in beauty. What more could you want, sir? Lucifer gently placed his left hand on faith. The yellow glow from the barrel stone overshadowed faith's color, like blood spilled into a glass of pure water, intoxicating and poisoning it with itself. No need to worry about any fears you may have about this event. Today will change history. When I sit on the throne and become like the Most High Creator, I will personally see to it that you and the other three are properly rewarded for your loyalty to my authority and leadership. Faith slowly lowered his head as they passed through the giant pearl gates. But if you want to back out on me now, well, that would be treason and out of order. I would have no other choice but to report you to the Creator as the one who came up with this plan, and I would personally see to it that he destroys you. Faith shot his head back up and looked Lucifer in the eyes as he gulped. No, no, sir. There will be no need for that. I will follow through with your plan. I will follow you through the end of time. Lucifer slid his hand off of Faith's shoulder, allowing his color to return. Good. He looked around at the other three. Anyone else have anything they want to add to that? Love, charity, and gratefulness kept their gaze from meeting his as they shook their heads in respect. Good, Lucifer smirked as they continued to walk. Very good. The host of angels soon arrived in the king's throne room, a beautiful, large open corridor with no ceiling and no end, a perfect symbol of the king's eternal reign. The room was filled with the sweet fragrance of incense and myrrh from the Creator's sweet spirit. Several large golden pillars stood tall throughout the room, a representation of the King's holy divinity. Purple and white tapestries were beautifully strung from each pillar, symbolizing the King's elegant royalty and pure beauty. The angels quickly took their places along the room. They'd stood tall, honored to be in the Creator's presence once more. Gabriel and Michael were the first to approach the throne. In perfect unison, the two angels knelt before their king. Your majesty, Gabriel said, as he fell to one knee and bent his head down low, avoiding direct eye contact with the king. He knew that he could not behold the king's face, for if anyone but the light bearer were to ever look upon it, they would surely die. The Creator was so great, so powerful, and so holy, His very face outshone the brightest sun and gave light to all of heaven. 
All glory, honor, and power belongs to you and you alone, Michael said with his head down as well. Forever and ever, Gabriel added. The king placed his hands on the back of their necks, a sign of permission and grace. Gabriel and Michael stood to their feet and took their places on each side of the king's throne as they turned and faced the angelic host. Flying high overhead were two powerful beings known as the seraphim. These angels were different from all the others, for the angelic bodies were made out of red fire, and they had three sets of wings. With the bottom set they covered their feet, with the top set they covered their face, and with the middle set of wings they flew high above the king's throne, forever giving praises to the divine maker. The source of the music seemed to be coming from these fiery creatures. Let the light bearer come forward and take his place, Gabriel shouted. The throngs of angels split into two massive bodies and exposed faith, charity, love, and gratefulness surrounding Lucifer who stood in the center. Immediately, the light from the king's face shone directly at Lucifer and as the light hit his body, a barrage of amazing colors filled the palace. The angels began to sing aloud together with the music that came from the seraphim as Lucifer slowly walked toward the king and his throne to the rhythm of their song. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. The angels continue to sing as one voice, louder and louder. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. This was Gabriel and Michael's favorite part of the ceremony. Lucifer would walk up to the king's throne, kneel before the Lord, and the king would breathe upon him, giving him power and making his body shine brighter than ever. Then Lucifer would walk behind the throne, spread out both wings, and cover the king. It was a beautiful symbolic ritual that represented the king constantly covering his creation with his presence, and it was a reminder to the angels that they were created by the king to worship and serve him. Lucifer, greatest of all the guardians, was the guardian of the king's throne. But today, he had a different plan. Lucifer approached the throne and knelt down before the king. The singing continued as the king breathed his spirit on Lucifer, giving him more power and wisdom. Shining brighter than ever, Lucifer slowly stood and walked behind the throne. As he got into position and spread out his mighty wings, he spoke. Angels of heaven, hear me! The singing stopped very abruptly and silence filled the temple. This was new. Lucifer never spoke as he covered the king in his throne before. Gabriel and Michael were tempted to turn their heads and face Lucifer, but they couldn't because the king's glory was still shining all around. I am finished with being used by the creator to serve him. I am the seal of perfection. The king has said it himself once before. By the free will that he has given us, I have decided to rise up and claim the throne as my own. A rustle of voices rose from the sea of angelic hosts. Blasphemy! Traitor! Hypocrite! One angel by the name of Raphael shouted above the mumbling voices, What is your motive, Lucifer? Lucifer looked down to where the voice had come. My motive is simple. It is to lead an elite army against the king and overthrow his rule. Faith, charity, love, and gratefulness started to walk forward, their eyes now shining with a death-red glow as their colored hues faded to gray. It was a sign that they were the first to fall into Lucifer's trap of corruption and lies. Even now among you are many who have said yes to my plan and no to the king's foolish ideas, and I want to give you an opportunity to join us if you have not made that choice. Gabriel tightened his fist around his golden staff. How could Lucifer betray them like this? And how could he just stand here and listen to him talk like that? If only the king would give him the signal, he would give the signal to advance heaven's army against Lucifer and take him down. Why was the king hesitating? 
Lucifer tightened his fist in anger as he yelled above the crowd, What kind of king has his servants worshiping him day in and day out? Is this the kind of life you want to live? I say no. I say let us be in charge of ourselves. Let me be your leader who will take you to that place of freedom. Let me be your God. Millions of eyes from individual angels started to turn red as they agreed to Lucifer's scheme and became corrupt as their own colors faded to gray. Michael readied his bow and Gabriel took a firm stand. And now, my fellow believers, Lucifer raised his hands high above his head with his wings outstretched as he shouted, Attack! A massive army of angels rose up against the angelic host to overthrow the king's throne and give it to their new lord, Lucifer. The guardians of heaven stood firm and held their ground, protecting the king and his throne. But the angels with red eyes had a new strength about them, a strength that no one had ever witnessed before. It was raw power that was fed to them through Lucifer himself, as if he was the conductor and source of their strength. Lucifer's followers were stronger and more powerful than they had ever been before. Their lust for more power pushed them to fight harder to ensure their victory. Gabriel cringed at the sight he beheld. Why was the king allowing this to happen? Should he and Michael jump in and help aid their comrades in protecting their king? The two seraphim, who were still high above the throne, immediately flew down to protect the king. They landed behind Lucifer with such great force that Lucifer was caught in a fiery updraft that threw him over the king's throne and down on his face before the creator. Faith, charity, love, and gratefulness rushed to help aid their fallen lord to his feet as the battle raged on. Embarrassed, angry, and humiliated, Lucifer stood up planted his feet firmly in place and stared at the king as the army of angels fought behind him. Lucifer raised his fiery broadsword high as his eyes began to glow bright red. You will not succeed, Lucifer, Gabriel shouted. We outnumber you and all of your followers 200 to 1. Lucifer smiled, revealing a new set of sharp fangs that seemed to grow with his obsession. That's not going to stop me from trying. Lucifer and his elite team of four angels charged at the king and his throne. Just then, a mighty voice sounded throughout the temple. It was as if three men spoke as one. It was as loud as mighty rushing rivers, and it echoed throughout the temple as if it were thunder. Enough! Everyone froze in place as the king continued. Lucifer, I established you. I created you, and you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created, until iniquity was found in you. Lucifer cringed in anger. The lust for power was overwhelming. The iniquity that the king spoke of was the desire to be served and no longer be the servant. Oh, how he wanted that throne for himself. He wanted the power of the king and the authority he carried. And as for your four servants who you have manipulated into joining your plan, faith, charity, love, and gratefulness looked on in horror and confusion. I will no longer accept them as my own. From now on, they shall be your servants just as you have desired them to be. Fear, greed, lust, and envy. The white wings of faith, charity, love, and gratefulness instantly turned black, a sign of their devotion to their evil Lord. Lucifer, your heart became prideful because of your beauty. You corrupt the wisdom I gave you for the sake of your own splendor. You were the anointed cherub, but no more. Gabriel and Michael loosened their grips on their weapons as they watched the king cast his judgment on the evil beings. This had never happened before in all of creation. Gabriel, Michael, and the other guardians watched in awe. Your heart has become filled with violence, and you have sinned against me. Therefore, I will cast you down forever, along with all those who have willingly followed you. Lucifer smirked, knowing that his time was not yet over. He still had a backup plan. 
a plan that would cause the king much grief and sorrow. He would manipulate the free will of the humans to follow after him instead of their creator. As his wings also turned black, the beautiful colors from the precious stones that made up his body faded away and turned to charcoal. A three-digit number was burned on each of their foreheads as a sign of corruption. Six, six, six. You shall now be known as the serpent of old, a thief, the prince of the air and the father of all lies. You shall be known as Satan. Just then, Satan, fear, greed, lust, envy, and a third of the angelic host were cast down from heaven. In a brilliant flash of light, the king threw them from heaven in a single lightning bolt, forever separating them from the Creator. The Lord has made all things for himself, yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. Proverbs 16, verse 4.